Yon, mga kameta, kamusta kayo dyan? Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo. Kanina, eh, nagtitrending na naman ito yung ano, nag-ano tayo ng mga biceps tuloy natin, na-stress tayo. Wala, ito, actually I was referring to this kanina guys, so, hindi tayo bumabanat uh, kahit kanino, wala naman akong issue particular with any politicos. What we do is, we give our opinion about the state of affairs of the country. Diba? So in general, sabi ko naman, Uh, instead of criticizing the media, tignan rin naman natin kung ano ba talaga yung mga kakulangan ng gobyerno. As much as, of course, yung media also has to show naman yung mga good things that are happening. Kaya ako in my own little ways, mga kameta, whether in my, uh, you know, whether in my mainstream media, commentariat, so whether in my columns, and sa mga vlogs natin, pinapoint out din natin yung mga magandang, magagandang nangyari, including under the current administration. No? So sabi ko, on foreign policy, we're moving in the right direction, in terms of recalibration of drug and, oh, war on drugs. So naiintindihan ko yun. yun. lang. So clarify ko lang kanina, I'm not necessarily directly referring to the senator or anyone like that. Uh, I was just saying in general, instead of gaslighting the media or criticizing the media, maybe titignan din dapat natin. Bakit yung imahe ng Pilipinas ay napaka-negative. And one big reason is because of all of the shenanigans that happened in the past, especially under the previous administration when it comes to human rights issue, when it comes to the bara-bara style of drug war, when it comes to pagmumura dun sa mga foreign leaders, U.S. presidents, so many factors contributed to that. No, And and we're looking also at violence against journalists, we're looking at lack of rule of law in the country, no, among other things. No, So, so to blame the media for just pointing out the facts or shedding light on the facts, That kind of misses the point. In fairness naman kay Senator uh, Zubiri, uh, mukhang they're moving on the right direction on another issue. Ito yung issue ng confidential fund. Kasi ito na, mag-approve na ang ating Senado, guys. Ng, uh, mag-approve na yung Senado natin ng... Ayan. Mag-approve na yung Senado natin ng budget, no? Laking budget, no? Lampas sa 5 trillion pesos ang budget natin. Dami pera. Um, <laughs> laki din ang gastos, dami rin utang. In fairness naman, uh, although Senator Zubiri personally said that he doesn't have a concern with confidential funds in in principle, sabi na sana naman yung mga funds na yun, mapunta na lang dun sa mga mas basic ng pangangailangan, especially dun sa mga kailangan natin sa mga uh, classrooms, mga basic welfare necessities. I completely agree with that. And And masaya naman ako when it comes to checks and balances and ensuring na yung Senado, yung Kongreso natin is making sure na, you know, uh, hindi lang sila rubber stamp ng executive branch. Uh, we're seeing at least there's more scrutiny ito ng confidential funds, intel funds. Uh, kasi nga, di ba? I mean, yun naman yung mga criticism sa mga ganun. How are we sure? How can we be sure na talaga mga itong mga intel fund, confidential funds are really justified, justifiable, and are gonna be used for the best? And especially because meron tayong credit, meron tayong fiscal crunch eh. Sa dami natin priorities, I'm not sure you need to give billions of pesos for confidential fund. Uh, and kaya nga meron tayong mga security agencies, kaya nga may naroon tayong NICA, kaya nga meron tayong mga AFP, kaya nga meron tayong mga iba't ibang NBI, etc. Trabaho din nila to make sure that we keep the country secure. So yun lang sinasabi natin. So in fairness naman, again ha, so ayoko yung mga style ng mga iba dyan na gusto lang nila ipakontrahin lang sa gobyerno, ayoko gusto nila magbabardagulan. Hindi po tayo nagbabardagulan dito. I was just expressing my honest opinion dun sa interview natin sa TV5 kagabi na sa akin palagay, we have to go to the root cause of the problem. Bakit negative yung perception ng Philippines? And one big reason is yung mga EJ case na nangyari, yung mga bara-bara style ng mga policy, especially under the previous administration. And I believe that Senator Zubiri perhaps should more focus on that than, you know, putting the onus on the media. Again, ha, I said, the media also has to point out when good things are happening, which is what I do on my uh, in my own humble ways, on my own part, no? Oh, ito na, ito na, ito na. Pag-usapan na natin, mga ka-Trumpers! Mga ka- ka-Unity American Edition. Ayan, 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 ayan. <laughs> ay, 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 Ito, ah. Siyempre, alam natin, pagdating sa mga Pilipino, pagdating sa mga Pilipino, sa mga Asian Americans, isa sa mga pinaka-supporters, pinaka-malaking supporters, 
ang mga Pilipinos, no? So, so maraming supporters si Parang Trump. Parang Trump sa Amerika. And including yung mga hindi Amerikano na Pinoy, no? Yung mga nalala ko pa nang ni tatay, ang dami, oh, Trump, 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 sila tuwan-tuwa sila kasi pinansin ni Trump. Si tatay Digong, hindi niya inaway-away, hindi niya na-criticize. Beshi-beshi sila, hagi-hagi. Yan, tuloy. So, eto eh, eto yung... Ay, 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 ito yung katotohanan. Ito, ito, guys, ha. So, may elections ngayon. Ito yung sinasabi ko na ang dami mga Filipinos na bumuboto kay Trump. No? Mga Filipino-Americans ay bumuboto sa Trump. So, medyo sikat si Trump. Ha? Sa America, 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 America. Ayan. Di na ako magpangalan ng mga kilala natin, mga relatives natin dyan, ha. Ayan. Don't worry. Ayan naman tayo, mga nagsasabi. Four more years, four more years. Nung 2020, naalala ko na. Huwag na tayo magpangalan. Mahirap na. <laughs> ayan. Ayan tayo eh. Hindi, ito, 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 guys. Mahalaga yung midterm elections ngayon. And by the way, the election is turning out very, very close ah. Wow. Tignan nyo, guys. Wow talaga. Look at how close the race is based on the latest development na nakita natin, guys. Ito talaga. Palaban, palaban. Ay, bakit napunta kay Daryl Yap? <laughs> <laughs> Bakit nag-ano si Daryl Yap? Wait lang ha. Sorry, di ko yata na-delete yung from kahapon. Tuloy kung sinong lumab- lumalabas dito. Birang si Daryl Direct Daryl. Yeah, okay, balikan natin. Ha. Ito guys, ha, the race is very, very close. And that's important because usually midterm elections are, unlike in the Philippines, anti-incumbent. No? So in the Philippines, usually midterm elections, ang panalang panala dyan yung incumbent. Ito yung case when President Aquino was the president, when Duterte Tate was the president, and my expectations in 2025, uh, Marcos supporters or mga admin supporters will do quite well, no? But in the U.S., it's quite the opposite because of the concern with concentration of power in the executive, with the concern with checks and balances. Si parang Elon na nakakalat-kalat na naman over Twitter since buying Twitter. Oh my God, anong ginawa natin? <laughs> ano na naman ang ginawa natin? Ah, nag- ano tayo? Sorry. Ayan, okay. Si parang Elon, kung ano nung pinagsasabi niya, wala naman siya alam sa politics and economics, nakakairita yung dork na yan. Anyway, nasa meta naman tayo, so we should be safe. No, 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 ito guys, uh, the race is actually far closer than many expected, especially si Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump was hoping that if na shalaking ang mga Democrats, dito sa midterm elections today, tonight, etc. Then, he will be in a good position to announce, surprise, surprise, his candidacy to run in 2024. And uh, four more years. So, ito so far. Uh, so, toss up yung Senate. In fact, the the Democrats were able to uh, flip a very crucial state, Pennsylvania, natalo yung pro-Trumper candidate na si Mehmet Oz, Doc Oz, who's a very, very Super celebrity guy. Natalo siya kay... Ah, ito, ito, ito. Parang Fredman. Ayan. So, nakita natin. Grabe yung, ano eh. Grabe yung race eh. So, ito talaga yung race, guys. Ha. Sa Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin. Ayan. Too close to call pa rin. Pero sa Pennsylvania, at least, medyo nanalo ang mga Democrats. The gentleman on the left, Fredman, was able to defeat the celebrity doc on the right na pro-Trump si Mehmet Oz. But... As far as uh, Herschel Walker in, in Georgia is concerned, he's putting on a very strong fight against incumbent uh, Senator uh, uh, Warnock, no? Uh, so, yeah, see, si, yeah, tama, Herschel Walker versus Warnock, no? So, see, si Fretterman was able to defeat uh, Mehmet Oz, but the race is still very close in Arizona, Nevada, and Wisconsin. And, of course, the the... the the issue here is, depending on what's going to happen in those key races, madidetermine sino mag-control ng upper house in the U.S. Mukhang yung Congress, mas malaking chance ng Republicans to take over. But that's completely normal and expected. But the race actually ended up much closer. And a lot of those are still too close to call. No, So, tingnan natin. But to put things into the context, in fairness, Biden is doing far, far better than many expected. And he may end up doing better than any American president in the past three decades. No, So, these are the numbers, guys, you have to look at. No, So, ito, ito, ito. Clinton lost 60-plus seats in the 1990s when he was the president. 
no? Obama lost 50 plus, Trump lost 40 plus, no? House seats during the midterm elections. But when it comes to Biden, the number could be significantly lower than it. So you may have the lowest uh, reversal, at least for any Democratic president. Uh, who was it? Parang Carter pa yan, no? Carter time pa yan, diba? So that would, that would put Clinton, uh, uh, Biden in a very, very good place. Again, uh, a lot of races are too close to call, but it's turning out it's very, very tight, no? And there's a possibility that the the Democrats will hold on to Senate and the Congress will keep it very, 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 very close para may rapa ng mga Republicans to railroad their way or completely uh, Apple effect against against Biden. No? So, tignan natin, guys. So, in the coming hours, malalaman natin pa, saan papunta itong elections na ito. But really, the big thing is this. Because one man who was really staking his political plans and his reputation in this race, and this has a lot of uh, implication for the United States in the coming years, is ito. Mga ano, ito. So, Donald Trump, no? Kahapon pa lang, he was teasing out an announcement about him running for the presidency in 2024 and he wanted to use itong expected massive victory in midterm elections which is turning out not to be the case as a launching pad to say see ang galing ko dahil sa akin nanali yung mga bata ko dahil sa akin we have it back and dahil sa akin we'll, we'll soon be back in the White House and control the United States again and interestingly parang si Trump ay medyo inaway-away pa niya yung potential competition niya sa Republican uh, ito si DeSantis no which sinuport naman ni ano ni Elon Musk parang Elon no so let's see no medyo matindi matindi ang labanan ngayon sa sa US so this midterm elections has a lot of implications there's implications about whether Biden will run again for the presidency in 2 years time it has implications for whether Trump will run for the president again in 2 years time it has implications for in terms of how much Biden can get done in the next two years. And guys, it has implications on many fronts in terms of U.S. economy, paano nila handle U.S. economy, U.S. foreign policy. And syempre sabihin man, ang pake natin sa U.S. Well, marami tayong pake. Unang-una, milyones sa mga Pilipina nandiyan sa Amerika, no? Uh, most of them, of course, citizens, no? At mga, mga kamag-anak natin, di ba? People very close to us, di ba? My grandfather, etc. They're all you know, U.S. citizens. So, my point is... May pake tayo dito. Pangalawa, may pake din tayo dito guys because uh, after nung election sa Brazil, pinakita ng mga progressives and democrats that they can actually beat authoritarian populist or pro-authoritarian populist leaders. No? And ako ang sinasabi ko dito is there are lots of lessons to be drawn from what's happening right now in the US elections which have turned out as far closer than many people expected. Ang sinasabi ko talaga dito, kung titingan mo especially yung race sa Pennsylvania with Fetterman, among others, I think the lesson is this, no? The lesson is that post natin yung tweet natin kanina, no? Para makita niyo yung mga sinasabi natin. Uh, mga kameta. For me kasi, ipake ako. Kasi I, I, I see parallels, I see lessons to be drawn, uh, I, see, I see some sort of demonstration effect. So, katulad ng sinabi natin mga kameta, diba? Democrats better than expected showing so, so far because we still have to wait for the fine numbers to come in only proves that the best way to save a troubled democracy is to fight fire, not with fire per se, meaning extreme versus extreme, but sometimes with sound and sensible candidates who can appeal to the center and independent. So, clearly that was the case with Fretterman in Pennsylvania who was this kind of a you know, he has a kind of a working class, macho, uh, rural, rustic, alpha male, TNL, to na lalaki look. And at the same time, very progressive. I think Bernie Sanders level progressive, not Biden progressive, no? And definitely not Hillary Clinton trapo level of Democrat. No, no, not like that. So we had in the case of Fretterman, someone who was very progressive in terms of his political convictions, but in terms of how he packaged it, how he presented himself, he came off as authentic, he came off as very relatable, and that was able to flip uh, Pennsylvania in favor of Democrats for the first time since 2010, right, if I'm not mistaken. So more than a decade, how are the Republicans in Pennsylvania? That was flipped now. So the race is turning out 
very very interesting so in the coming days i will be working and analyzing about what are the lessons for the philippines and other besieged democracy not only from brazil but also from us and different places again of course hindi naman tayo exactly the same but let's not forget our political system was based on the american political system when they colonized us more than 100 years ago and while there are many many differences between us and the united states jurisprudentially you know in terms of legal precedence in terms of political momentum in terms of inspiration model etc the u.s has always been a big reference point for filipino politicos for filipino voters for filipino judges lawyers uh, experts pundits media so on and so forth kaya nga sabi ko uh, tingnan natin yan and, and again i of course i look at things as part of a bigger wave no this is about guys this is about this is about this is about the lessons for the Philippines. No, this is about the wave we're seeing from the reversal, talo ni Bolsonaro. Now, Mohang Trump is kind of losing also here. Definitely not getting the kind of uh, red wave, massive shellacking of democracy he was expecting. So, yan ang titignan natin mga kameta. Yan po yung mga tinitignan natin. So, please pay attention to what's happening there. And of course, the U.S. is the biggest economy in the world and the most powerful military in the world and not to mention the most important cult pop culture no source of pop culture in the world so what happens there has huge implications here not to mention political techniques polling strategies uh communication styles many things in the u.s tend to be the kind of benchmark for other democracies major democracies uh, around the world not to mention my experts in those countries uh try to go around the world our brand this crisis and apply their ideas to latin america to asia to africa uh to to Europe and different parts of the world, no? So, yun po yung tinitignan natin. Ayan. Oh, by the way, mga kameta, mukhang may problema tayo in terms of number of people tuning in. Ay, napansin ko parang may weird na naman. I hope walang weird na nangyari sa loob ng ano, ha? Baka may makawala naman mga videos natin. Ayan tayo. Uh, so, mga kameta, please kindly watch. And, uh, ah, ito, ito, mga kameta, please, ano, ha? Please make sure na... Mag-subscribe kayo sa atin. There's a way, kasi ang dami nagreklama na hindi sila na-notify pag nag-live tayo. So I don't know, mukhang may problema tayo dito guys. May problema tayo pagdating sa uh, following and ours. Siguro there's, there, there are things you have to, i-favorite nyo na yung page natin please. And make sure na i-markado yung page para to make sure na whenever I go live, you guys know we're there, okay? Kasi may problema naman tayo sa notifications eh. Again, as always, let me thank so much si Ma'am uh, Lumberio. Very kind. Well, I hope she voted di ba? sa U.S. And mukhang siguro happy siya about the U.S. elections outcome. Salamat kay Ivan um, si Pace. Is that correct? Mala Salamat kay Jesse Monahan, kay Angeline Liesol, ayan, kay Heidi Kalaw. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat for, for joining us. Okay, uh, Ma'am Eden Alonan, kay Rizani, yeah, thank you so much. Maraming salamat sa inyo sa mga nagbigay ng star and support, sa mga nag-comment and suggestions. Ayan, ayan tayo. Eh. Palitan natin ng konti to para na. Pardagulan. Pardagulan. Yan. Sige, maraming salamat guys ha. So let's keep it there. Balikan ko kayo with more updates in the US elections among others. Marami pa tayong pwede pag-usapan. Marami pang exciting nang nangyayari. Nangyayari. Ano ko ko niya? Nangyayari sa mundo. Ayan. So I'll... I'll Salamat tayo dyan sa mga kameta natin. Back to back na naman tayo. Alright, thank you so much guys. Uh, please continue to support us. Please follow us. Subscribe, like, and is paki-favorite yung, yung ano natin, channel natin para alam nyo kagat pag live na tayo. Alright, thank you very much guys. And don't, war don't forget to get your dinner and spend time with family and loved ones and reflect on the day on the day and the days to come. Alright, hasta mañana. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Adios.